So it looks like SpaceX is getting closer to expanding its launch capabilities at Starbase in South Texas, thanks to a new signal from the FAA. And SpaceX has initiated its plan to launch orbital missions of its Starship rocket from Texas about five years ago, necessitating a federal environmental review of the site. Now, this review aimed to ensure that the site was suitable for such operations without posing significant environmental risks. And in June of 2022, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, completed a final programmatic environmental assessment, or a PEA, and subsequently granted SpaceX approval for up to five Starship launches per year from its South Texas launch site, known as Starbase. Now, since receiving this approval, SpaceX has conducted numerous Starship launches from Starbase and is planning a fifth launch within the next two or so months. Now, however, to meet this testing and flight plan, SpaceX needs to increase its launch frequency. SpaceX has requested the FAA's permission to conduct up to 25 flights annually from Starbase in South Texas. The company also seeks authorization to both land the Starship upper stage and the super heavy booster stage back at the launch site. And just on Monday, the FAA indicated a favorable stance towards this request by releasing 154 pages of a document it called the Draft Tiered Environmental Assessment. It suggests that the modifications proposed by SpaceX conform to the previous environmental assessments conducted in 2022. Now, the FAA's draft document states the FAA has concluded that the modification of SpaceX's existing vehicle operator license for Starship Super Heavy operations conforms to the prior environmental documentation consistent with the data contained in the 2022 PEA. Now, the, that there's no significant environmental changes and all pertinent conditions and requirements of the prior approval have been met or will be met in the current action. Now, this finding indicates that the FAA believes its previous extension analysis of Starship activities was adequate to cover SpaceX's proposed modifications. However, this document is only milestone number three in a seven-part process that will eventually lead to the final decision. The next steps include a series of public meetings scheduled for around August, both in person in South Texas and also online, and the public comment period will conclude on August 29th. Now, although the process is not yet complete, the document reveals federal regulators' inclination to permit an expanded scope of SpaceX's activities. It's crucial as SpaceX plans not only to launch more rockets, but also to land them back at Starbase and significantly increase the thrust of its vehicles. And SpaceX has significantly requested permission for 25 annual launches and 50 total landings, 25 for Starship and 25 for Super Heavy. Additionally, the company seeks approval for up to 90 seconds of daytime Starship static fire tests and 70 seconds of daytime Super Heavy static fire tests per year. Now, SpaceX is also, also working on developing more powerful variants of its rockets. The environmental assessment completed in 2022 accounted for a 50-meter tall Starship and a 71-meter tall Super Heavy booster stage. The upgraded Starship would be 70 meters tall atop an 80-meter booster stage for a combined height of 150 meters. These new, more powerful launch systems will require over 1,500 tons of liquid oxygen and methane propellant, one factor that may have facilitated the approval process is SpaceX's commitment uh, not to increase road closures at State Highway 4, which leads to the launch site and is closed during launches and static fire tests. Now, the FAA draft document mentions that SpaceX has dramatically reduced the duration of operations and number of access restrictions through engineering analysis and improvements, noting an 85% reduction in access restrictions from Flight 1 all the way to Flight 3. And most pre-launch testing that required access restrictions has been relocated to SpaceX's Massey's test site, approximately four minutes away from the launch site. Now, following the public comment period, the FAA will prepare a final environmental assessment and make a decision on SpaceX's request. SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, has shared optimistic predictions for the upcoming Starship Flight 5, suggesting it could occur in about two months, uh, or early September, possibly. Uh, pending FAA approval, but he highlighted that uh, Flight 5, they plan to catch 
the 232 foot tall super heavy booster using the launch towards catch arms. Despite that, Musk believes there is a 50% chance of success for this maneuver. And he usually goes with the 50% thing because it's like, who knows? Uh, another key objective for SpaceX in Flight 5 is testing the heat shield for the Starship Second Sage. Now, following issues in Flight 4, SpaceX has upgraded all of its ship's tiles, aiming for better landing precision and heat shield performance. Now, the successful implementation of these improvements is critical for both the test and the overall safety. As Elon Musk emphasized, the need for the heat shield to remain intact during reentry to avoid potential damage to property or people. The thing could just shatter and explode. And SpaceX's preparations for Flight 5 include ecstatic firing the upper stage Starship. And this is the first such test of a flame trench near the launch pad. It's a significant step towards the upcoming launch. And in related developments, SpaceX is in talks with U.S. and Australian officials to land and recover one of its Starship rockets off Australia's coasts. Uh, this potential operation is part of SpaceX's broader efforts to expand its testing campaign and establish a presence in the region, aligning with the U.S. and Australia's security and space collaboration goals. Now, the discussions aim to secure permissions and navigate regulatory hurdles for landing Starship on Australian waters and uh, also recovering it in Australian territory. It's seen as a strategic move to bolster the space and defense capabilities of both nations. Now, SpaceX is working with the Department of Defense on this. Successfully recovering the boosters after ocean landings is a pretty crucial aspect of SpaceX's rapid development of its reusable rocket tech. The potential landing in Australia would demonstrate further capabilities in point-to-point -point delivery of military cargo, leveraging SpaceX's Starship advanced technologies. Now, specific plans and locations for the Australian operations are still under discussion. And it's U.S.'s commitment to strengthening its allies' military and space capabilities among growing regional ten uh, tensions right now. And the expansion into Australia uh, is an important step for SpaceX. They want to make SpaceX's Starship global. They want to be able to do point to point. And the Starship system, it's 400 feet tall. It's two stages. It's designed for full rapid reusability. And it's central to SpaceX's future plans to get people to Mars. Its aim is to transport large satellite batches, Starlinks, support lunar missions, and also facilitate rapid global cargo delivery for the Department of Defense and for probably some private people too and private companies. So Starship's June test flight was a huge milestone. Uh, it had a soft, a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean. And this is a demonstration for the rocket's potential point-to-point -point military cargo delivery. The successful fight, flight was propelled SpaceX into a new phase of more complex landing tests, which are going to be upcoming. Elon said there's possible landing tests in the next few launches. Now, the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory's rocket cargo program, it envisions suborbital rocket deliveries of military cargo, and it views Starship's capabilities as crucial. They could get anywhere in the world in about an hour, which is huge. Starship launch from Texas and a landing in Australia could validate this program. And the tradition from or the transition from traditional aircraft delivery times to rocket-based cargo transport is a dramatic improvement in speed, which leverages SpaceX's Starship orbital velocity and hypersonic uh, reentry capabilities. Now, they have ongoing studies, SpaceX does, uh, under a $102 million Pentagon contract aimed to refine these delivery methods with more serious prototype efforts slated to begin with the U.S. Space Force in 2025. Um, they're on the verge of expanding Starship launch operations in South Texas right now. And the FAA is indicating preliminary approval for increased launch frequencies and landing capabilities. And this development, coupled with discussions about landing operations in Australia, shows that SpaceX is continuing to progress the reusable Starship rocket for future people to go to orbit, go to the moon, and continue on to the red planet of Mars.